Hello, in this section we will focus on how to prepare mouse embryos for imaging. For this we will first go through the basics of mouse embryogenesis starting at the time point of fertilization until germ layer formation during gastrulation. Then we will look into the different collection techniques which are dependent on the different stages of development. In the end we will discuss how embryos are cultured for inverted light microscopy. Mouse embryonic development is counted in embryonic days short e. As mice are nocturnal and matings take place during the night, midnight of the night of mating is assumed as E0.0. .0. Upon a fertilization, the zygote undergoes a series of cleavage divisions, which lead to an exponential growth in cell number. Reaching the 2-cell stage at E1.5, the 4-cell stage at E2.0 and the 8-cell stage at E2.5. At the same time, the embryo activates its zygotic genome, degrading residual maternal mRNA, a process that is initiated at late zygote stages and completed at the two-cell stage. Until reaching eight-cell stage, the single cells of the embryo, called blastomeres, are non-adherent and show equal potency despite slight differences in their expression levels. During the eight-cell stage, the embryo undergoes the process of compaction, where the single blastomeres establish tight cell-cell junctions between neighboring cells. During the following cleavage division, the first lineage segregation takes place, parting the outer cells from the inner cells. The outer cells develop into the trophectoderm, which will later give rise to the placenta. The embryo then inflates and forms the blastocyst at E3.5. The inner cell mass then further segregates into the pluripotent epiblast, which will give rise to the fetus, and the primitive endoderm, which will give rise to the yolk sac. All three lineages together compose the mature blastocyst at E4.5. At E4.5, the blastocyst then implants into the maternal endometrium through its mural trophectoderm. The polar trophectoderm vastly remodels from a single cell layer to a multilayered epithelium, which invaginates and gives rise to the egg cylinder at E5.0. During the following 1.5 days of development, the embryo establishes its anterior-posterior axis through signaling from the trophectoderm and inhibitory signaling from a small population of the viscal endoderm, the distal viscal endoderm. This group of cells migrates to the future anterior of the embryo, thereby defining where the head is going to be. At E6.5, the primitive streak forms at the posterior end of the epiblast and initiates the process of gastrulation. If we now want to culture and image these embryos at different stages of development, we have to recover them from the mouse reproductive tract. This is composed of the ovary enclosed of by the ovarian bursa. The ovary itself is attached to the oviduct, which leads into the uterus, two long tubes that are interconnected at the cervical region where they end in the vaginal vault. To collect early pre-implantation embryos, we have to break the ovary or the oviducts apart, in case of the zygote or the two-cell stage embryo respectively. The eight-cell stage embryos can be found in the oviducts as well as in the uterine horns, which must be considered when collecting E2.5. From E2.5 to E4.5 stages preceding implantation, the embryo can be found free-floating in the uterine horns. To extract these there, the ovaries and oviducts, as well as the vaginal vault are removed and the two uterine horns parted at the cervical region. Then a syringe filled with recovery medium is inserted at one end and the embryos are flushed out of the uterus together with the medium. Following implantation, the embryo collection requires dissection. Upon establishing contacts to the maternal tissue, the maternal endometrium decidualizes around the embryo. For dissection, at first the uterine horns are cleaned from surplus fat tissue and vasculature. Then oviducts and vaginal vault are removed and the decidual swellings parted through cutting. Each single decidua then must be cleaned from the surrounding endometrium. The decidua shows a dark line across half of its structure along which it must be opened and at its end the embryo is located, which should be carefully retrieved. Following collection of pre-implantation embryos, 
They are cultured in glass bottom petri dishes, in which a drop of medium is covered by a specific mineral oil which allows gas exchange. A pre-implantation embryo are completely round, is completely round. So a grid is attached at the bottom of the dish and the embryos are placed inside the grid. This prohibits movement of the embryo which would otherwise move out of focus. Embryo culture is carried out similarly to mammalian cell culture at 37 degrees Celsius and 5% CO2 in a humidified atmosphere. If we want to culture post-implantation embryos, we also use media drops covered with mineral oil. But since post-implantation embryos are not fully circular, culture grids are not required. Instead, they are cultured in small drops.